everyone, welcome to Paint the Kitchen Red. I'm Nina and I share Instant Pot tips and recipes from around the world. I'm on a mission to convert every one of my family's favorite recipes to Instant Pot recipes. Today I'm going to be sharing with you Instant Pot Cashew Butter Chicken. Uh, it's an alternative to butter chicken, which as the name suggests, is a recipe that has a lot of butter and a lot of cream. And so to lower the calories, I created this alternative cashew butter chicken. I took my Instant Pot chicken tikka masala recipe and my Instant Pot chicken curry recipe, which is a recipe that is a family recipe that I got from my mom. And I combined them to make a recipe that has become one of our favorite recipes recently and I make it all the time. It's just a very tasty recipe but it's so easy to make and it's just consistently comes out really well. So I'm going to walk you through it and so let's get started. Here are the ingredients you're going to need for your Instant Pot Cashew Butter Chicken. Two tablespoons of coriander powder, one teaspoon cumin powder, one teaspoon garam masala. If you can make your own, that would be great because garam masala always tastes really good when it's freshly made. I'll give you my recipe in the notes. Two tablespoons of minced garlic, one and a half teaspoons of salt or to taste, two tablespoons of dried fenugreek leaves, also known as methi, and these are easily found in an Indian grocery store. And if you can't find them, uh, or if you don't have an Indian grocery store close by, you can always get them on Amazon. I'll go ahead and put a link in the notes. One teaspoon of Kashmiri chili powder. Kashmiri chili powder is a milder chili powder, but it gives really good color. And so if you're gonna use a different kind of chili powder that's more spicy, then you can reduce the quantity and add some paprika, or you can, if you like it spicy, you can keep it one teaspoon. Two teaspoons of honey, five whole cloves, six cardamom pods, two cinnamon sticks, about one and a half to two inches, two tablespoons of minced ginger, half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, which I forgot to take a photograph of. And continuing with the ingredients, one and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs cut into one and a half inch pieces, one cup of tomato sauce, two tablespoons of ghee or butter, or you could use vegetable oil, three fourths cup of chicken broth, two cups of chopped onions, three fourths of a cup of yogurt, I like to use whole milk yogurt, quarter cup of chopped cilantro to garnish at the end, one serrano or jalapeno pepper slit lengthwise. Uh, if you uh, are, are sensitive to spice, then you may want to omit the chili pepper because they can add uh, a lot of spice, so just be careful. Two tablespoons of cashew butter, one tablespoon of graham flour or chickpea flour, also known as basin. And once again, this is something that you may not find in a regular grocery store. You'd have to go to an Indian grocery store or you can buy it on Amazon. And I'll put a link in the notes. So the first thing we want to do is turn on saute mode and heat the Instant Pot up. Add the ghee or butter or oil, whichever one you're using and cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, and stir everything together until they're fragrant, about 15 to 20 seconds, and you wanna make sure that they don't burn. Add the onion, ginger, garlic, And using a spatula, just stir everything together. Add the green chilies. 
and stir everything together until the onions are a nice golden brown. It's going to take a little while, so just be patient. But the secret to a really good chicken curry is to get a golden brown onion mixture. If you find that the onions are sticking to the bottom at any point, you can deglaze with a little bit of broth. And when you deglaze, it makes sure that there are no brown burnt bits on the bottom of the inner pot and so you won't get the burn message later on when you're pressure cooking. Now we're ready to add the spices, the coriander, the cumin, red chili powder, cashmere chili powder, turmeric, salt, the fenugreek leaves, honey. And I really like the flavor that the honey gives this recipe. The honey is a great counterbalance to the tanginess of the tomatoes. And you can even add a little bit more if you like to. Now stir all the spices together and be sure to stir constantly and don't let the spices burn. If you find that your Instant Pot is too hot, then go ahead and press cancel and just let the spices cook in the residual heat. Because if you burn the spices, that's just gonna ruin the curry. And then we're gonna add the chicken and stir the chicken so that they are coated with the spice mixture. And you'll notice that the liquid from the chicken works to kind of deglaze the inner pot but if you need to you can add some extra water or broth to make sure there's nothing stuck to the bottom of that inner pot that's really important now let's add the broth and stir everything together we want that liquid to go to the bottom of the inner pot and yogurt Stir that as well. And now finally I'm going to add the tomato sauce and I'm going to put it right on top and I'm not going to stir it. And this is to help people avoid the burn message because a lot of people have that issue. Now close the Instant Pot and we're gonna pressure cook for about four minutes. Your Instant Pot display will go to on and your float valve will come up in due course. And once the pressure cooking is done, we're gonna do a natural pressure release and allow the float valve to come down on its own. Open the Instant Pot lid and stir everything together. Turn on saute mode to saute the remaining ingredients and heat them all the way through. Add garam masala, chickpea flour, and finally the cashew butter. I like to add the garam masala at the end. One reason is that's how my mom does it. And the second reason is I feel that the pressure cooking dulls the spices in the garam masala. So I prefer to add it at the end and heat it through on saute mode. Now one final stir and then we're just going to let it simmer for a few minutes. Finally we add in the cilantro and stir that in too. And I also wanted to mention that this curry tastes great the next day so you could easily make it ahead of time and then heat it up before serving. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.